Hello, sorry it's been a while since I posted, it's been um, all uploaded, whatever the terminology is, but I'm going to read a couple more chapters from James and the Giant Peach and then I'm going to have a go at a couple of other books that you might like. So I hope you enjoy. This is chapter 14 of J and 15 of James and the Giant Peach. Now, at the end of the last uh, couple of chapters, James is now inside the peach and he's made friends with all the enormous creatures that have suddenly materialise after those funny little green objects have um, created this new world of his. Let's see what happens. We're off, someone was shouting. We're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake was taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's happening, cried James, leaping out of his hammock. What's going on? The ladybird, who is obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know, she said, we are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great big beautiful peach a land of, 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 a land of, of what? asked James. Never you mind, said the ladybird. But nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive aunts of yours. Here, here, they all shouted, here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybird went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that has been stopping this peach from rolling away right from the beginning is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite. Not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybird, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach nibbling away at that stem. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you up under my wings so that you won't fall over when we roll, start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it! We're off! We're off! The others cried, we're off! The journey begins, shouted the centipede. And who knows where it will end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it's going to only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybird. We are now about to visit the most marvellous place and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There's no knowing what we shall see, cried the centipede. We may see a creature with 49 heads who lives in the desolate snow and whenever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has 49 noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink-spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for its supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. We may see the sweet little biddy bright hen, so playful, so kind and well-bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just pull them and then they explode and they blow off your head. A gnu and a gnosera, surely we'll see. And that enormous and gnorable gnat, whose sting when it stings you goes in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake or tremor. Or nastier still, we may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let's go rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, almost oh, gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashing against the far wall. So did James and the ladybird and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm and also the centipede who'd just come slithering down the wall. 
Outside in the garden at that very moment, Aunt Spiker and Sponge had just taken their places at the front gate, each with a bunch of tickets in their hand, and the first stream of early morning sightseers was visible in the distance, climbing up the hill to view the peach. We shall make a fortune today, Aunt Spiker was saying. Just look at all those people. I wonder what became of that horrid little boy of ours last night, Aunt Sponge said. He never did come back in, did he? He fell down in the dark and broke his leg, Aunt Spiker said. Maybe his neck, Aunt Sponge said hopefully. Just wait till I get my hands on him, Aunt Spiker said, waving her cane. He'll never want to stay out all night again by the time I've finished with him. Good gracious me, what's that awful noise? Both women swung round to look. The noise, of course, had been the cause of the giant peach. It had been caused by the giant peach crashing through the fence that surrounded it. Now, gathering speed, every second it came rolling across the garden towards the place where Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker were standing. They gaped, they screamed, they started to run and they panicked. They both got in each other. Others way. They began pushing and jostling and each one of them was thinking only about saving herself. Aunt Sponge, the fat one, tripped over a box that she'd brought along to keep money in and fell flat on her face. Aunt Spiker immediately tripped over Aunt Sponge and came down on top of her. They both lay there on the ground, fighting and clawing and yelling and struggling frantically to get up again. But before they could do this, the mighty peach was upon them. There was a crunch. And then silence. The peach rolled on. And behind it, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker lay, ironed out upon the grass as flat and thin and lifeless as a couple of paper dolls cut out of a picture book. Okay, I hope you enjoy those chapters. Uh, until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.